Welcome to the Advanced Companion AI's Update, 1.0 Insights. In our conversation today, we will meticulously examine the novel features incorporated in the recent update and explicate how these enhancements can be beneficial to you right away. To begin with, we will focus on the innovative functionalities that have been added to the product, enriching its overall capability. Finally, we will also touch upon some minor rectifications made to improve the product's performance. Let's get started. Initiating our discussion, let's delve into the newly enhanced area detection system, which now astutely adjusts its orientation according to the normal vector of the terrain beneath the player. This modification proves to be exceptionally useful when maneuvering the system within precipitous environments where previously, the area detection system could erroneously classify the ground as an obstacle, consequently triggering the companion into a follow-behind mode, taking a lot of immersion from the gameplay. As you can see in the video footage, the system is currently not using the ground alignment feature, which makes the area detection system collide with the terrain. This could later on lead to annoying AI behavior, which we do not want in the system. Upon activating the ground alignment feature, it becomes apparent how swiftly the area detection system adjusts its orientation to the ground's normal vector. Consequently, this allows the rays to dismiss the floor as an obstacle, regardless of the severity of the terrain's inclination, providing more realistic AI behavior in your games. In order to accomplish this, the area detection system shoots a ray downward from the player's location. This ray, while ignoring the player's character, identifies and returns the first point of impact along its trajectory. The system then computes the normal vector from the precise point of impact and returns it as a normalized vector. Instead of aligning the area detection rays around the player's center by the player's rotation, they are now oriented around the player's center using the angle of the impact normal. That's it for the area detection system. To empower developers using this system, a slew of additional settings have been incorporated into the companion component. These updates enable users to enact more comprehensive changes to the system without modifying the original code. This proves to be particularly advantageous for less experienced developers, as it allows them to fully utilize the system without the fear of inadvertently disrupting anything by tampering with the code. Firstly, let's delve into the general AI settings section. Within this, two new options have been introduced. The first option decides whether the AI should teleport to the player once it reaches a specified distance. The second setting encompasses a float value that denotes this particular distance. In the event of teleportation, the AI will be randomly relocated within the player's vicinity. This feature proves immensely valuable for those planning to deploy the AI in more intricate environments where there is a risk of the AI becoming immobilized and losing its ability to follow the player. Next on our list, we'll be exploring the For Run settings. Situated beneath the Hittable classes, we've added a new Boolean. This particular setting ascertains whether a secondary projection should be consistently triggered when interacting with an object that belongs to a class listed within the Hittable classes array. This improvement proves significant as in the previous version. Objects within the Hittable classes solely employed a single projection, which often led to peculiar behaviors in intricate environments. As you may have inferred, in line with the extensive modifications made to the area detection system, we've also introduced several new settings to the system. These are designed to facilitate a more streamlined workflow with the improved version of the system. You can now effortlessly configure whether the AI should align its area detection system with the ground normals. Additionally, a quick toggle option has been introduced, allowing you to easily decide whether to display debugging shapes or not. Also, you now possess the capability to specify the number of rays utilized by the area detection system. This adjustment allows for enhanced precision. However, please bear in mind that deploying a larger quantity of rays could potentially impact your system's performance. It's also important to note that this setting is currently only compatible with the radial detection method and won't work with squared detection. Having comprehensively discussed the newly added functionalities, Let's now turn our attention to several minor bug fixes and overall improvements to both the code and internal processes. In the upcoming segment, each bug fix will be succinctly explained, providing you with a transparent understanding of the refined version of the product. Initiating with the Hittable Classes Array, which is utilized by the projection system. In prior versions, a bug resulted in only the first element of the array being recognized by the projection system. With the latest improvements, you can seamlessly add classes to the array, 
and the projection system will automatically classify all actors within that class as hittable objects. This enhancement significantly reduces setup time for your AI levels and saves you a lot of time. Next, let's address the wandering endless loop. In previous versions of the system, the game encountered a crash whenever the AI failed to locate a valid wandering spot. This issue proved to be quite vexing, as it was a frequent occurrence for the AI to not be able to identify a valid location when used in complex environments, invariably leading to a crash. However, this problem has been rectified. Now, in instances where the AI is unable to pinpoint a wandering location, it will simply maintain its current position until the player initiates movement again. Additionally, some users reported encountering issues when operating with Unreal Engine 5.1. It was observed that the behavior tree was frequently resetting itself, obstructing the AI's ability to freely wander the environment. This was due to the idle section of the behavior tree consistently failing. Interestingly, this problem was exclusively tied to version 5.1 and the exact cause remains elusive, though we speculate it was likely a bug within that particular engine version. Nonetheless, we've successfully rectified this issue by integrating a buffer into the behavior tree. Essentially, we added a wait node that is activated whenever the behavior tree encounters issues. This addition prevents the behavior tree from failing and resetting itself, thus effectively eliminating the bug. Alongside numerous minor code optimizations, we've also enhanced the process of gathering points of interest. The revised process now comprises approximately 50% less code than before, making it far less complex. In the interest of brevity for this video, I won't detail the other minor optimizations as they primarily involve the alteration of individual nodes or the disabling of tick events to marginally enhance performance. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope this walkthrough of the new features and bug fixes in the latest update was comprehensive. If you encounter any difficulties or discover additional bugs, please do not hesitate to contact us. We greatly appreciate your support and feedback. Thank you for tuning in.